at least. Uh, uh, shout out to the the legend uh, Steam notification. The Steam didn't, uh, stream didn't see it. Steam notification. Orange God of his friend playing New Vegas and their profile pic. What a legend. Was it the fo it was it was Foshi, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, he's really horny for Android Twenty One. Should, he's Shit, I missed the profile. Pit. He's a hero. Wait, is it Foshi? Yeah, I've talked to him about Kaiji. Yeah, we talked. Yeah, he. Fucking hero. Mm hmm. Uh, give a round of applause. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking. Fucking man has yeah. great taste. He watches, he watches Kaiji I mean, too, who so doesn't the man like is Android 18. Oh, yeah, Random. that definitely sounds like a base map. I actually introduced my rockabilly jackass friend to the concept of fat evil, and he just said it was the best goddamn thing he's ever heard in his life. Oh, uh, okay. What Funny. is the concept of fat evil? Is it just fat people who uh, are evil? It's what is it fucking yes. the SPFP had this funny little thing about how in all of David Cage's games is a character who's fat and evil, so therefore um yeah. Because all right, yeah. that was the entire bit. Mm -hmm. So now then, we've got fifty two, fifty two uh tips that we're gonna be reading through basically. <laughs> yep. To it's find it, to find the truth. <laughs> And, uh, Orange Eye, you, you, you have, have that guide fucking that, right? guide out. Oh, yep, uh, let me get my little guidebook out. I need to fucking see the shit. Oh. It's a good thing that you, uh... Oh, good thing it's capturing nice wallpaper. that. Nice wallpaper! Hey, it's still sick wallpaper, man. Was it the panty? Was it the panty? Oh, I was gonna say, was it the panty and stocking uh, wallpaper? Did they catch you down bad in 4K? It, it, that's not for showing up on the stream, so only you guys are seeing my fucking wallpapers. That's good, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay. oh, that's good you there are Let some. Let me get this straight from last cable. time. Even there are some get all the fragments ones. right on the first try. We still have to play it all over again to get the true ending. The wording's a little vague. No. I think that's how wrote... it's gonna go. All right. So, uh, the first one's on page four. It's the second uh -huh. one. Uh, to, to answer your uh, thing, uh, Wild Rook, we do have a guide with us and. Mm -hmm. uh, we're pretty confident in it, so don't worry. Yeah. All right. A local explanatory meeting. This fragment is required first, I think. Yeah, this is this is the first one. Okay, let's do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Who wants to be a government official? Wait, do we have <laughs> Nora in here? Is Nora in here? He should be. No, he's not. I guess he just didn't. All right. Uh, do you want to ping him um, or whatever? I could do the voice if you he's want. Probably late. For a moment, Wait, why I did I do caps... that in COD? God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> For a hot second, I thought Cap shit post with Takano was actually a part of the fucking stream. <laughs> All right, Shelly, if oh, you want to be the good. government official, you can. <laughs> did you just hear like a, a an, an almost spot on Nelson laugh? Yeah, yeah. connect them. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's just how I that's just how I do. It also <laughs> sound a lot like uh, Ralph <laughs> Wiggum. <laughs> Just, just give me uh, two seconds. I'm just resizing my windows so I can actually see it okay. properly. Okay. I'm in danger. So, the dam construction will bring in new jobs that revitalize the local industry. Uh, That's not what we're saying! Okay, oh, bone taking no, initiative. No, bone taking initiative. He can go. <laughs> oh. Who the hell gave me permission to build a dam here? You squeeze tax money from us, and this is what we get in return. I think this might be multiple villagers. Okay, just do it, do it, do it. Do yeah, it. I'll finish this, then you go. Who do you think pays your salaries, huh? Look, okay. we're trying to explain this to you. We don't want to hear your excuses. We don't want to know when you'll stop the construction. Uh, Not the you're building. useless. Bring the minister of construction here. He'll get to the bottom of it! Shut up, you yuppie! Oh god. <laughs> hey, you're paid with our tax money, so why the hell are you talking down what's from up there? Come down here and let us speak face to face. To face. The auditorium is filled with angry shouting and rabbles. The sign of the entrance says, Enemies have a damn construction explanatory meeting. Every time the official on the stage tried to say anything, the citizens pack into the room silenced him with their shouts. Trying to ignore them, the official continued to explain the pros of the dam. But they just further infuriated them. 
Between the stage and the citizens, there was an open area where the police squad is standing by. If they weren't there, the citizens would jump on the stage and start a riot. Oh! This is Han you talking! In the back of the auditorium. I look away for a second and now everyone suddenly... It's obvious to anyone that they're being swallowed by their anger. It's become filled with a bloody red rage. The anger that came from a certain purpose becomes a purpose in itself and it creates a vicious cycle where anger leads to more anger. Anger is a necessary emotion for humans. People face many difficulties in their lives. Anger gives them the motivation to fight and conquer such difficulties. Therefore, anger is an essential part of life itself. So I will never reject anger itself. However, anger like this, it goes beyond normal, it makes people forget their purpose. That is no longer an essential part of life. As the blood rushes to their head, a person can't even remember what they've done. They go out of control. Such emotions are very painful, sad, and difficult to endure. I can very clearly see the villagers who live alongside us turning into demons. I understand the rules of the human world. The power of an individual can't be compared to the power of the government. To be able to fight, an individual needs to become part of a larger unified power. But to steer that unified power in the right direction is extremely difficult. The cycle of anger leads to more anger. Not anger that helps you live, but anger that exists only for anger. Just like being a demon. And this emotion is capable of violently rousing us from our long, peaceful slumber. Everyone is immersed in their own anger. We lived peacefully with the villagers while we slept, qu slept quietly. Yet now we've awakened, like the world is trying to return to that age when the that derives from Oligophagy Swamp. Keep shouting at everyone to get them to calm down. But my voice can't reach them because of the vicious cycle of anger. Even so, I'll continue shouting, hoping even one of them will hear my voice. Because if I don't do anything, the demons may awaken. Demons that went into a deep sleep may reawaken because of this commotion. Oh wait, there's more than one demon? Maybe, yeah. I think they're metaphorical. I think, I mean, actually, wait, the I'm entire sorry. village is supposed to be, like, uh, descended she from... said, oh, what yeah. the other sleeping demons, so that implies there are more than just Han you around. Yeah, Akuma, yep. from, Akuma from Street Fighter 4 is gonna come yeah. here, and he's gonna I do think, his cool moves. Yeah, yeah it's, I think the lame answer is that they're, they're metaphorical. And let's not forget about Orda. He's Hell coming, too. Uh, the Hellcat yeah. for are now canon. The, now, have you ever heard of Dramen? The iconic Mortal Kombat the fucking Deadly Alliance Mortal Kombat character. Deadly Alliance <laughs> Yeah. Draman will be here. Here is a name I never thought I'd hear again. Helltaker will be real in five minutes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you mean Hellraiser? Fucking Razor? demon hair. No, I'm, no, I'm gonna, I guess, I guess, I don't know. I guess as so long as Hanyu is not on screen, it's just gonna be general narration. I don't know. Found the Monica, please. All of a sudden, the atmosphere changed. Looking up, I saw that the angry exchange between villagers and those on the podium had devolved into confrontation between the villagers themselves. What's going on? Sadako's dead? Um. Okay, hey, Sadako's dad's here. Um. Shut, shut up! up. Uh, okay. There you go. Oh, shut up in there, will ya? <laughs> those are your reasons, not ours. Don't pull us into this, you old hag. Who the hell cares? The hell you say, you bastard! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> 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 I knew you were gonna do yeah, that! I had to. I had God to do damn it! it. Sorry. Thank yeah. you! I deal with Benny from New Vegas, but that's better. <laughs> what in the Don't God you know who you're talking to? This is Aryo-san. You've got some nerve, huh? 
Who the hell do you think you are? Shut up! Sonazaki, so what? I'm Hojo! Get your goons away from me! I like this guy! Hey, Hojo! How dare you say that you want the village to be submerged? How much are they paying you? Shut up, you old geezer! <laughs> Listen, there are plenty of poor people in Hinamizawa. Not everyone is rich and has fields all over the mountains like you do. I'm satisfied with the compensation from the government. You've been offered to provide us with public housing. Yet you're ruining everything, you assholes! Don't pretend you're the same as us. If you want to fight with the government, why don't you fight by yourself? Then who's going to pay? You? I'm poor and I have two kids at home. It's funny to start a new life by leaving here in peace after getting compensation from the government and finding a job elsewhere. But you... Since when do you represent me, huh? Do you think you're, that you're that important, or what? Hey, 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 Hojo! Wait, that's oh, me. Wait, what? I thought that it was just a normal girl. I thought that was a different guy. It can be anybody. Well, he said, hey, 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 that's why I wanted to take it. You go. Hey, hey, hey! Hojo! How dare you betray us! Like, get out! Get out of the village! Sure! I'll be happy to! But you're gonna pay what I'm entitled to, right? You're gonna pay me every yen of the compensation I was going to get from the government! You know, if I want to leave the village, I don't have the money! If you're gonna pay me, I'll leave straight away! Hojo is right! There are plenty of residents who are willing to leave. You three families shouldn't drag us into this. Hell is this? Who just spoke? Ugh. Come on, who was it? If you want to stay, then stay. Wait, no, that's something else. Grimson, do you want to go? If you want to stay here, then stay! <laughs> we have the right to leave, don't interfere. Remind me. Uh, That's right. Village. Back the hell off, you damn Zonosaki hag. Woof. That was an official. Jelly, Jelly. Jelly. Oh yeah. Need an on set. Sorry, my mom was bothering me. She was texting me. Ah, of course. We'll compensate the people who support the damn construction plan. We most certainly will not steal the land from you. Shut up, government dog! Wolf. Are you trying to divide the village? I, Hojo. You don't deserve to breathe the village air. Hold your breath, it's suffocate to death! <laughs> Screw you! Screw you, old hag! I'll murder your ass! Step up front, you damn hag! Catch me outside! Hey! Stay out of this, you fat pig! Very good. That was very good, Hojo. I haven't been this pissed off in so, so long. You'll get what you deserve. Look forward to it! Somebody wasn't spoken yet. Get him! Get him, hold you! I was just Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. god. Get him! Get him! <laughs> Go eat him, boy. Oh, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna finish that remark, Nora? <laughs> the government has to provide us jobs and shelter. God, you sound like the, you sound like the auto-generated fucking dialogue from that me game for the fucking 3D Tomodachi oh, Life. You oh, sound like. <laughs> You sound like the fucking auto-generated text from Tomodachi Life! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> I love- I love Markiplier! Oh <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what's going?
<laughs> Alright, okay. Jelly! Hey, hey! <laughs> stop this violence! <laughs> All of you, stop it! Stop it! I cow! Bring it on! Come and get some! Round one. Fight! Everyone is being tainted with the bloody red anger. And I can only watch. The least I can do is to apologize for the tragedy that is about to happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is how things started. From this day onward, the Hojo family and the Sumazaki family will wage a feud against each other. And the Hojo family will become ostracized within the village. This marks the beginning of Satoko and Satoshi's lives of tremendous hardship. Oh wow, that was it? Holy shit. Alright, 1 of 50, let's go! An in-depth chapter. It was only like 20 minutes long, holy shit. Yeah, this is kind of what I expected. Like, now that was what was what was the, 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 the Chill it. I know, no, I was talking about the rage mechanic, because I said they had so bloody bad. red anger. Cool. Oh, I thought you were but, talking about, like, that yeah, character no, who was no. called Rage All right, from we are on no. Alright, so that's one. We are on Fragment 2 now. Where the fuck my, is... my, my brain, upon hearing Dude. bloody red anger, thought I it's just... It Oh, like, just just like every time that happens, you are going to see a different wallpaper. It changes, like, every couple of minutes. Cool. Yeah, uh, mine's to rotate every uh, Page five. Yeah, mine's thirty. Uh, this mine's one. Every Rika Rika oh fuck! Who's talking? Uh, probably Rika. Rika. I ran into Sadako while on my way to the grocery store for my mother. Sadako said she was going there too, so we decided to go together. <clears throat> After exchanging our shopping lists, it became easy to guess what the other family would be having for dinner. Atako's family is having grilled fish and cooked vegetables. We are having Salisbury steak. My, it sounds so very good! I don't mind the grilled fish, but it's the vegetables I'm less fond of. I'm certain there's still plenty of pumpkin left from the other day. Getting a lot tonight. I don't appreciate knowing that pumpkin is going to show up on the dinner table. Uh. I don't like pumpkin, no matter how it shows up. I can hear her playing the stream in the background. Rika, you have some food you're not fond of, don't you? <laughs> That's right, you don't like daifuku, the cream pops, or anything sweet, don't you? No, she you likes hard you. liquor! <laughs> not that I don't like those things. I just choose not to eat them. If I wanted to, I could eat sweets forever. I could even eat pumpkin pie, too. Nipa! There you go, that one's already on tape. Mm. Oh, it's not fair that you're on a picky eater! Conversations like this are how I have fun. Atako is my best friend. I usually don't like grocery shopping, but if I'm with Satoko, I can make it into an enjoyable evening stroll. Near the supermarket, there's a grocer's and other shops forming a little shopping district. The grocery store is busy this time of day. All the housewives in Hinamizawa gather here to shop. Since Satoko and I have different things to buy, we decide to do our shopping separately. Welcome, welcome! Oh, Rika-chama! 
Are you shopping for your mother? What a good girl. Wow, you really are a good girl. Here, I'll give you this. There were several candies from the owner's occasional asthma attack inside a sea full of change hanging in the front. He picked out a sweet from there and gave it to me. Wait, did he did he give her anti-asthma medication? <laughs> this candy? No, he no, sucked on remember. the candy oh. so bad. Um, Anti-Texas anti meds. <laughs> It was my favorite flavor, strawberry milk. It's a gong union. What? It's a gong union. I I don't know. Strawberry milk. Okay. Yeah, gyunya is milk. It's a gong strawberry. As a wise man once said, I do not speak Japanese. I don't speak. I'm I'm sorry. I do not speak Japanese. I'm sorry! I don't oh, speak Japanese! Alright, anyways, Setsuka. <laughs> I had a feeling that line was gonna come out. <laughs> Fucking Zetsu no no Shiba or whatever. Oh, I Shima. Oh, line. god, yeah, okay. Sorry, that one's on me. That's fine, it's fine. I'm in my pocket so I can brag about it to Satoko later. I get a lot of fun of teasing Satoko and making her jealous. She always overreacts. I never get bored when I'm with her. What are you having for dinner tonight, Rika Chama? Ground pork? <sighs> We're making Salisbury steak. We're going to put flower shaped fried eggs on top and draw pictures on them with ketchup. Oh, ho, ho, ho! oh that sounds like fun. I enjoy that conversation while filling my shopping basket. Then I overheard some women whispering. They're talking about something that's a little harsh. They're talking about Satoko. How long do those village traders plan to stay here? They should just leave. They don't even have the guts to go shopping themselves and make their daughter do it instead. The women went on and on. Ever since the Hojo family and the Sonazaki family got into a huge fight at the explanatory meeting for the dam project, the Hojo family has been ostracized within the village. At first, there were a significant number of families in favor of leaving like the Hojos. The main branch of the Sonazakis led to push to completely solidify the village's opinion. And as that tone of unified resistance grew stronger, the pro evacuation family steadily grew quiet. Public harassment led by the Sonazakis and the Kimiyoshis, two of the three families with powerful influence on the village, also played an effect too. The Sonazaki family made the Hojo family into an example, to ensure there would be no more pro evacuation supporters. The ancestors of the villagers have lived here for generations. The villagers also know that they themselves will be buried in this village, so this harassment put a lot of pressure on them. Who was it that agreed to make the Hojo family the leader of the pro-evacuation group at the explicit meeting anyway? The same people no longer said anything. They even joined in on harassing the Hojo family. The harassment they faced and became pressure from the entire village. The Hojo family is hardly wealthy, and they haven't paid the town council fees in a long time. And things were peaceful. Nobody said anything about it. But now that the wind was blowing a different way, the Hojo family was asked to pay off all of their late council fees immediately. It wasn't an amount they could afford, but the Hojos recognized a fight was being picked with them and they responded to it. And so the Hojo family quit the council. That only played right into the village's evil plan. Being an enemy of the town council meant facing vicious harassment. For example, the place the Hojos dumped their trash was a provisional dumping site established by the town council in the waste management. 
Under the council agreement, only council members could use it. Ever since the day the Hojo family quit the village council, the trash bags were returned to their front door. God, they're petty. That is. Very petty. Furthermore, all the bags were torn. On top of that, a sign went up on the hedge road near the Hojo family. It said, Private Road, No Trespassing. Only council members permitted. A stubborn old man stood and guarded the road, saying he would not let any of the Hojo family members pass through. That's highly legal! Private road is private property opened up to the public, so it looks just like a normal road. However, as private property, the owner can forbid anyone else to pass through whenever they like. More and more... ...village piled on vicious harassment. Fear of antagonism spread throughout the entire village. And people became afraid that if they supported the Hojo family, they'd go through the same thing. <clears throat> this has made the Hojo family even more isolated. Grown-ups haven't told their kids about what's going on, so Satoko isn't harassed in any way at school. But it wasn't hard to imagine she'd probably spend her days feeling anxious when she could hardly breathe. Even the women whispering in here aren't saying anything directly to Satoko. It's not like she doesn't notice their muttering in the cold stairs. When did this village become so cold towards her? As her best friend, it's very sad for me. Satoko shopping experience is nothing like mine. When I say hello or buy things, I usually get treats or a discount, but that doesn't happen to Satoko. On the contrary, she served last on purpose. Sometimes shop owners even pretend they don't hear her. Obviously, people don't want to have anything to do with her. Natako has been weaving through the housewives, crowding the shop, telling the fishmonger what she wanted, but she kept getting ignored. He's decided to keep her smile and pretend she doesn't mind. But I know. It was far too painful for her to endure. At that point, Satoko dropped her coins on the ground. Maybe her finger got stuck on something when she was trying to put the change back into her wallet. I ran through the crowd to help her pick them up. As I did, I noticed something. Satoko dropped a lot of coins and is struggling to pick all of them up, but nobody is helping her. It's not just that. It's almost like they're acting like they don't even see her there. Satoko isn't expecting anyone to help her since she's the one who dropped them. But... But... There are so many people around, and not even one is trying to... Satoko, I'll help you. Uh, I'm okay, Rika. Reaction is all I need to tell how hurt she is. Furthermore, when I started to help Satoko, other housewives started to pick up the coins too. It's as if the natural, as if it's the natural thing to do. They can only help if a shrine man in the Furude family does. If I didn't help, I would have disregarded her completely. And the fact that other people helped only because I did hurts Santaku even more. Grab the coins from the housewives without thanking them. I'd rather spit at them than do that. Thank you very much. Ika. Everyone. If she didn't thank them, people would talk about that too. Atako forced out her words of gratitude. 
housewives look down at her with blank expressions. I can't stand this. I can't stand what Sadako is going through right now. We're done. Let's go, Sadako. Sure! Grabbed Sadako's arm and pulled her away. It's frustrating. Sad. And bitter. What has Sadako done? Reality is just too cruel. Everyone loves me. Can I share that love with Sadako? Sadako would be wondering why people treat me so differently. You shouldn't come shopping with her. Or rather, I should have done her shopping instead. Sadako? What is it, Rika? I feel bad that you dropped your coin. Well, here's something that'll make you happy. I wanted to at least ease your pain a little bit. I pulled out the strawberry milk candy I just received. But, the cool refused to take it. That candy was given to you. My hand froze. She saw. She saw me getting this candy. That person wanted you to eat it. Oh, so if I did, it'd be rude. Dicko turned her back on me and kept walking. Without even saying goodbye, she continued onto her house with the shopping bags in her hands. I... I only wanted to ease her pain. But I ended up rubbing salt in her wound. How can I call myself her best friend? If I could, I would have crushed the candy right there! Mm hmm. Damn. Fucking. That's. That's. Man, Oreo is the fucking no, I'm, worst. No, I'm not it's saying that Oli. Was. I'm not saying that Takano is good, but I'm saying they kind of deserve the. Uh, end I'll of be real with you. Fucking. I wanna, uh, uh, Kate, she's like, I, I live in this village. I love this village. Fuck this village. Yeah. I wanna. I kind of wanna see the extermination again. That was pretty based. My man, my man said yes. Ethnic cleansing. Let's go. Yes. Fucking. Fucking my boy AC out here being like. You well, know, genocide's pretty based right now. Yeah. Listen, AC, yeah. AC, AC, too hot for Twitch. You are right. Okay. Those <laughs> fucking enemy Zowans had it coming. They had it coming. So, with their brain AC. parasites and their like, weird you. fascination with their gay cafe. What? Like, a AC, you're like. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, wait, are you I'm like? like are you doing with... actual racism now? <laughs> I, I, oh, I can't wait for, wait, for the Mountain Dogs in Tokyo to wipe this place out again. Just you wait until the Mountain Dogs open up those bunker doors and there's a secret Soviet lab with a demo. I'm not even... I'm not even... I'm not even... I'm not I know, I know, yeah. I know. The next one is, uh, Dam Construction Operation Withdrawal. That was not Cold War, that was Stranger Things, by the way. I mixed up my references. For what... It's Markiplier! Jacksepticeye. Uh, hold on a sec. Where's Markiplier? Where is he? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Market Player's going back in the shed now. Sorry for being late. I had an unusually large number of patients today. Thank you for coming, Lieutenant Colonel Irie. Tomitake stood up suddenly and saluted when he saw Irie come into the room. All right, all right. Stop calling me Lieutenant Colonel. I'm a doctor. I just can't get used to military ranks. Can you call me Director Can instead? We LP. Understood, <laughs> understood, Director Irie. <Irie-ay. laughs> oh, fuck. Just call me something unassuming, like the Director. <laughs> call me Fiora. Call me High Chancellor Irie. <laughs> call me Irie Skywalker. No. Call me oh. President of Life. Yo, it's call like me. Me. They rhyme. Call me, me Master Mistress Irie. <laughs> uh, Tell me, talking, please, of course. 
What am I? Some kind of suicide squad? <laughs> Tomitake, of course, knew that Irie didn't like to be called Lieutenant Colonel. So some kind of joke. They laughed casually together. On the other hand, Takuna looked rather fed up with it. She couldn't stand hearing the same joke over and over, even thinking of talking to Tomitake her about it herself. But she didn't want to hurt his feelings, so she simply never had the, had the chance. It's because of how Tomitake pronounces it. But she keeps hearing Risa, Lieutenant Colonel in, J in Japanese, Nisa. When she heard it like that way, she was she kept think hearing a uh, Irie Risa, and every time Tomitake <laughs> said it, or Risa, yeah. when Takano told, yeah, when Takano told Irie about it, he had a good laugh. Today was just a simple meet and greet. Tomorrow was the actual meeting. Tomitake had already arrived, but there were more inspectors from Tokyo with the meeting, waiting to hear about the progress that had been made. Anyway, I heard the whole village is all up in arms about the damn construction project. You can say that again. The village is in such a mess. I participated in a local municipal explanation meeting at the as an official, but the whole thing was a lie with angry shouts and profanities. After the basic Shina Mizawa Dam project was announced, the village was consumed with an uproar. The government re uh, retracted their plans for concessions rather early on. They made their aggressive stance clear. They then want the locals to take advantage of them by showing their willingness to compromise. However, that backfired horribly. As they had historical ties to the land, the government's actions only made their bonds stronger. Neither the government nor the locals wanted to, wanted to back down. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> People from Hinamizawa are rather hot tempered. Maybe because they're descendants of demons. It's not funny. That wild meeting lasted all night! I feel your pain! <laughs> really, it's not funny, tomitake So what's going, what's going on with the damn construction? Are they really going to submerge this village? Tokyo's applying the pressure to the situation, too. Things might seem clamorous on the surface, but in truth, the supporters behind it are wavering rather hard. I hope their pressure produces results soon. The whole village is buzzing with action from dusk till dawn, and I worry the villagers' minds are growing agitated. Sometimes it does I listen to my patients go on and on about their opinions about the damn construction plan. <laughs> Why do you even listen to them? You are too nice. I have to. I'm a clinical director first, and research center director second. It's part of my job to listen to them. That's very nice of you! It's admirable! I know the people in Tokyo will call off the plan sooner or later, but the villagers don't. So that the list live in fear they might be forced to leave the land where they'll live for generations. Even if they're told to leave, they don't have the money, and a lot of them are old. Maybe some wanted an increased amount of compensation they'd be offered, but the government changed its mind. I don't think it's possible for them to come to a peaceful agreement at this point. There were actually some villagers who were satisfied with the amount they were and they were willing to leave. However, the Sonozaki family didn't want to change their stance against the issues. They're actually they're actually leading the villagers in a fight against the government. There are blaring announcements va announcement fans everywhere, and ads and flyers are attached to the, circu the circulation notices. Also, they keep chanting "fuck poor people" for some reason. It's a serious matter for him. It's a serious matter for him. I guess I can understand. I hope the construction plan will be called off soon, for their sake. Once it's called off, the village will become peaceful once again. I know that, of course. Things are moving right along in Tokyo. So please give us a little bit more time. I've heard a rumor from Tokyo that you're having problems finding a way to pressure the Minister of Construction. Is that true? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I've heard myself. I heard myself that they are having a little problem with some of the details. Talking about powerful people supporting her, they didn't control all of Japan. There were some things they excelled in, but also other things they weren't too good at. Finding a way to put pressure on onto the Minister of Construction fell into the latter. In all seriousness, though, 
we really will be facing any requests to leave this area because of Dam, right? Of course not. I can guarantee that won't happen. It's just taking longer than we thought, that's all. So please, continue your research. I told that, they, that if things can't be resolved peacefully, then we may have to use drastic measures. Drastic measures? What do you mean, tomatake san You don't need to worry about that part, Director Irie. Please let us take care of it. I see. Okay. Thank you for your work. I'm Director Irie. Dam construction project will be called off. It's already been decided. <laughs> As Takano giggled, Tomatake laughed, too. However, Irie couldn't understand what was so funny, so he felt left out. Irie almost only understood the meanings of the drastic measures when he examined the young boy he'd never seen in the village before. Oh? That was a problem. It's all connected! Also, Chelly, uh, technically speaking, isn't, uh, Tomatake is, like, part of the J Japanese municipal government. <laughs> Like yeah, in the anime, his role is just literally, Yo, what's up? I'm exposition photo photographer dude. Wait, they didn't go into his role in the government? Basically, no. They just said that... Uh, wow. I, 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 can't, I don't even know if I'm saying spoilers, so I should shut up. That's fine. He's right. from the company. Oh, geez, I saw your background. Relax. All I want is everything. Oh, what the fuck is my background? Oh, that. Yeah, Morgan. Nice! Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm sure, like I'm sure I'm sure people sure. on Twitch can't see. <laughs> yeah. uh, chapter Are you sure about that? So, I mean, page, you know. could have shown it on Twitch, but... Uh, page three. Yeah, yeah. Jiro Tomitake. <laughs> we'll finally learn more about Markiplier. It's true. <laughs> I'm the king! <laughs> Forecast said there was a chance of rain in the evening. I didn't think it would have rained so hard. Instead of waiting at an abandoned bus stop for the rain clouds to clear. Sorry, talking to son. Hello, Judo-san. I knew before, so don't worry about it. Talking to son, giggle. Although she said the weather might change suddenly, I dragged her out of here. I feel stupid for making her come out, come along, and ending up ruining her precious day off. I have to go back to Tokyo tonight, so I'll be waiting a while before I can return to Hinamizawa. But then I spend my last day at a cheap hotel in Okinomiya. I asked her to go for a stroll. It's just... <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> she teased me for a while, but only a little. She was actually enjoying driving me into a corner. It, that was just her way of communicating, and I find it very charming. I think I've become captivated by her. But on her part, I'm just an auditor from Tokyo. And she's being nice to me, and it's definitely not because she likes me personally. <laughs> I feel like I might have used my position to drag her out here. And it made me a little depressed. I probably should think this the slight fever I have is due to nothing more than a cold. She's the type of person who made it clear that when she disliked something. She wouldn't say it directly, but she would use all kinds of indirect expressions that, may, that meant the same thing. So I want to believe that she's out here because she might even she might be even be a little bit attracted to me. I am a peak physical condition. <sighs> I asked MH in my head as I frowned upon my selfish thoughts. Jackal as though she knew what I was thinking. Unless I was starting to go red after that. So why are you hanging with a weirdo like me? A weirdo? No way! You're fascinating, Takano son. Actually, I feel bad making you spend a day with someone like me. <laughs> of course, I've decided to devote my life to my work, but life is too dry to tell me that. I need to switch gears once in a while. Besides, communicating with the opposite sex is good for the brain. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all good if a man failed you clear your head. Don't you feel refreshed just being with me? 
Uh, Crimson saying a strong hunk of a military man made me realize I want to see Tamatake in hunk's outfit <laughs> from fucking Resident Evil. Hey, hey, he does look good in that. I'm an extraction point. <laughs> don't know that it isn't Tomitake under that armor. True. That could be possible. Calm down, Mr. Grim Reaper. <laughs> Which gives me an impish smell that makes my heart skip a beat. I tried adding my embarrassment so you wouldn't even notice my ears going red. <laughs> uh, of course! When I'm with you, uh, you know, I do feel refreshed, yeah! Besides, if you learn about avian photography, I'll gain a buddy to share my hobby with. So, so uh, <laughs> next time I'll bring my old camera. <laughs> it's really expensive to buy a new one, you know? <laughs> Thank you. I would love to learn about the avian photography that is so intrigued by. We can hope to join you in a storm next time. So, I don't need to buy a camera, do I? No, 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 no! Try out my old camera first! If you enjoy it, you can buy a new one for yourself. I'll send it to you when I get back to Tokyo. Thank you. Then I'll have you critique my photos when you come next time. Make sure to find those hidden PP stickers I have lying around enemies out! <laughs> Fantastic! That's the Dead Rising thing, right? It is a Dead Rising thing, yeah. Okay. I can't believe it's actually kept <laughs> nice. The game transitions into like a, a 3D game and it, you just become talking or taking photos of, of zombies. <laughs> like, you do realize now saying PP photos, right? Yeah. Yes, it's from, yeah, yes they're photo, their photo point uh, stickers you can find in, in Dead Rising. Yeah, you get extra point. PP. Uh, what else PP. would they be, Bone? P Pictures of penis. P -P's. P -P's. God damn it, Josh! Uh, PP's comes for uh, wait, 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 Joking it's dead rising. Look, joking Tell me Take might grab a boob. His penis is in a competitive mood. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can't hardly wait to see him. <laughs> They'd be nothing compared to you. It'd be my very first time doing it, you know. While well, she keeps her cool and smiles, all I can do is blush and scratch my head. <laughs> Am I being conceited? I can't but think that talking does sound like being with me. With mere flattery, I don't think to the that you come along this far. Oh no 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 no! Taking woman's flattery seriously is the mistake I always make. I should assume that she's attracted to me. Finally, this be the first time you've been alone. Uh, yeah, you're right. Usually the director or some other research staff is around. I don't know anything about you. I don't know exactly what you do in Tokyo or what you've done in the past. I wonder what you do in self defense. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was an instructor for a while. But I was injured and I hurt my eye. I can live my life normally, but they made a big deal out of it. And ever since, all I do is, is desk work. <laughs> where they stuck a needle in there afterwards, and I built some sort of weird religious monument. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about some giggles, saying it must have done something silly to cause the injury. When I helped PR with our magazine, I became fascinated by photography. Cameras have the power to make people happy. <laughs> I bet you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's true. But I decided to take paper photos, my life has been a lot happier. Twice the most of one wants. How can a camera make someone happy? Well, a camera takes a snapshot of a moment of life. Of course, you want to capture a moment that's filled with happiness, right? Mm -hmm. Look for happiness through the viewfinder, and then you get a big happiness score. <laughs> As you search, you realize your everyday life is actually filled with happiness. For example, a dandelion sprouting from the crack of the asphalt is just a weed in a busy, busy life. When you look at through the, the viewfinder, it's a gift to let you know that spring is approaching. You capture and put in an album, and every time you open the album, you remember the happy feeling you've had when you took that picture. You always feel that way when you take your pictures? Sure! I don't have ambition to taking art, uh, artistic photos or capturing a dramatic, prize winning moment. That's not important to me. I want those moments we don't notice. Helping us recognize those little moments of happiness is the greatest thing about cameras. So I'm really glad to be able to see Hinami's out through my viewpoint. 
have a tendency to go overboard when I talk. Most of the time, talking to someone playfully twists my words right back at me. I wish she playfully twists my mm. <laughs> So it's very unusual for her to listen to me like this. Is that ever going to twist it? <laughs> Talking oh to son sat down next to me and tried to <laughs> fiddle with my camera. <laughs> tried to fiddle with my camera already. <laughs> Don't have much of an impression to me, but I think she indeed is interested in cameras. I can tease me like usual, so I'm happy to see that this is her reaction. Do you want to try? It's easy. First, you need to learn how to focus and press the shutter. Why don't you hold it? Oh, don't even touch the lens, though. This isn't easy. <laughs> you seem so interested in cameras. Want to take a walk around Hinemizawa and take some fo pictures of the scenery. Fortunately, the rain doesn't seem to want to stop. But she was still having fun and taking fo uh, pictures of the of the bus stop. Well, the first set of pictures she ever took were of odd things in the dark in, a dar in that dark little building. Since then, every time we'd meet, we ended up walking around the village with our cameras in our hands. my talking on now that I have this thing. It's good. I, I need to look at pre other mods to compare your mics, but I think it is better now. I yeah. can't believe, uh, uh, I can't believe that uh, Takano is Tematake's uh, co-op character. <laughs> uh, the, the only thing I would probably say is that sometimes it does sound a little quiet. Well, I, actually, I'll have you know, in Higurashi <laughs> Vanilla, it was actually it was actually two Takanos. <laughs> and then in Higurashi Off the Record, they made him... <laughs> Uh, we didn't catch that last bit, what'd you say? They made they made Tomotake the co-op partner. Or no, they, oh. made, they made her Tomotake's co-op partner. Okay, third pick? Yeah, yeah. Second pick. Yeah, this is off the record. She, it's a lot, Yeah, this is uh, off the record. Tomotake would be Takano. Uh, also, Kaneko, do you have noise reduction on? Because sometimes I hear a tiny bit of, like, static whenever you're talking. It's not really that big a deal. No, I don't really have noise reduction on this thing, unfortunately. No, I mean, it's a part of the Discord, uh, voice and Oh, yeah, video. you turn crisp off. Yeah. Oh, no. uh, hang on a sec. Let's see, number yeah, five is, is, pop, is, is gonna... Kyosuke Yurie. Wait, turn yeah, it if you're doing, pop? like, quote-unquote professional recordings like this, Crisp actually makes it worse. Mm -hmm. I'm just hearing, like, this tiny bit of, like, static whenever she's doing, like, Kyos. the softer ones. I oh, should think I turn that's... Crisp off, too? I think that's just me. Group physical exams are very meaningful for our research. Although it's only for a certain age groups, we can examine many of these Hinemizan residents at the same time. It's a perfect cover for our research center. Also because of several arrangements, we have a monopoly on the villagers' corpses. We can perform aut autopsies on them, too. Bruh. There certainly wasn't an environment as this rich as an opportunity for those in the medical field. Our follow-up in the uh, on that- uh, on- <laughs> Our follow-up on the work of the late Dr. Takano is going smoothly. The amount of data he compiled is absolutely astounding. He truly was an incredible researcher. Excuse me, Director. Oh, Takano-san. Thank you for your work. We just received the rest of the results from Tokyo. Here they are. Thank you. It's getting interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad we can share this joy. Talking of someone is my assistant. We was sent from the self-defense force. But she's far from my image, uh, the Im from the image I have of an SDF officer. It's like our research is being concealed. Maybe her identity is concealed, too. I'm sure her name is an alias as well. She's a doctor and a researcher. Without Takano san's support, it's impossible for me to manage this institution. The pipeline to her clients in Tokyo assistant. As well, my assistant, as well as a researcher who is an expert in Hinamizawa Sin. Her existence is absolutely necessary here. The more I think about it, the more I feel like this should be a, this should have been the Takano Institute rather than the Irei Institute. She should have been the director. But that was expanded to me when uh, they asked me to take the position. I client upon a civilian to manage the place. I searched for a person who met their requirements, and there I was. I became the director. I feel like I'm just a puppet for, on their strings. I don't just sit here and do nothing. But that's a researcher of rare disease. I'm a researcher. So of course I'm excited about that. 
My client's goals might have been different, but I'm out here. Uh, I'm, I'm here out of the desire to unravel the mysteries of Hiro Miyazawa Syndrome. To be the first person to uncover a new mystery for mankind. We have all this data that suggests the existence of a parasite as the cause of the syndrome. But we still can't find factual evidence of the culprit uh, microbe itself. That's true. I thought we'd find it easily if we used an electron microscope. Viruses are too small to see with a regular microscope. The invention of the electron microscope was a dramatic advancement in the world of medicine. However, it's very expensive and there's no way for a normal doctor to acquire one. Like Dr. Takano said, an electron microscope could find the cause of the, of the disease. His theory has only been, has been proven wrong. Even Takano was hoping an electron microscope would find it. She was disappointed when she couldn't uncover anything after all the autopsies she performed. Our research seems to be having its first snap. I think she's still all our work for several weeks now. We need to think about where to go from there. Which means, rather, smaller than microscopic. Maybe there's something wrong with the specimen itself. What do you mean? For example, as you know, wild mice have tons of fleas on them. But you can't find fleas on dead mice. It's because when the mouse dies, their habitat, their habitat dies as well. So... If the house dies, Parasite's world will end too. That's right. But you won't find a living human in a post-apocalyptic world. And therefore, we just have to look into the Earth before it ends. Right. <laughs> That's true. <coughs> However, we need to think about human rights. I look into a brain while the patient is still alive. There are ways. Examining a living human's brain. No matter how you sugarcoat it, the bo that bore very grave meaning. From a medical standpoint, it's necessary. We have rules and morals in this world. We have to advance medicine with such boundaries. There was a time where I was studying lobotomies for the betterment of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're yay. <laughs> Irie fucked up in evil moments. <laughs> wait, wait, what Yeah, let's worry about it? human rights, Mr. Monopoly on villager corpses. <laughs> yeah, let's. I was of, of, forgot of about all that the fucking ways to phrase that, <laughs> Monopoly over corpses sounds like you're actively killing people to get bodies. Wait, what did he say exactly? He's throwing his little greasy scientist hands together going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we had, to go, we, had to, we had to get the lobotomy man to find the brain parasite. Oh no! No, listen, no, listen. no, no, don't show Grovgar. Listen, now listen. We here, no, we have, no, we, no we, Grovgar. No Grovgar. No, we are the good no, guys. We are fixing this Hinamizawa thing. Now please bring over the children from the school. I need to perform a cerebral injection on them. No, 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 you don't understand. All we have to do is hack into his DNI, and we'll find the answer. <laughs> Now, okay. now, Isaac, uh, I just need you to crawl into the machine. Ah! Now, Rika, that's a totally normal procedure. All right, what's that little girl's name over there? Yeah, I want, her in, I want her in the drill chair. I need to see what a lobotomy does to these kids. <laughs> oh, fucking God. Now, Rika, this is standard procedure. I'm just going to take this fucking ice pick and just nail it into your fucking skull. Uh, it's a little bit fun. But it's a little fact, but my, my grandfather, Mrs. Takano, my grandfather, uh, he was actually a doctor too. I long to make his research he did in Mancuria. Like, I hope it's all, like, oh, get some use here. Okay. You know, I have a cousin who went to go do some things in Tuskegee with a weird disease. You might not have heard of it. <laughs> My grandfather, like, he he was, like, he did a lot of research involving pregnant women. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> Have you ever heard of a place called Stanford? I heard there's a great experiment there we could go check out. Oh, no. Oh, no. That, was, that was fake, though. That wasn't real. What? No, they teach that in psychology courses. That's real. It's actually fake, actually. It's a, wait, what? The, the, no, they no, told the people that they told to pretend to be wardens to be dickheads. Yeah, they kind of fudged the um, experiment. Well, not even they. Yeah, it's a fudged it experiment. They directly told like, them. No, to they, be like it's, stereotypical they were told. Yeah, they were told to be like that. That they were told to be like that. Yeah, but like that was uh, kind of also the point, I guess. Scientists say Stanford Prison experiment was fraud. 
Wait, didn't that also cause the Unibomber to exist, or was that with MK Ultra? What? Because I, MK Ultra is it wasn't actually real. That was just all like. No, that was real. No, that's real. Really? Really? Happened in Canada. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm confusing MK Ultra with Polybius. My bad. Polybius is, <laughs> definitely isn't real though. Those are very different things. What's happening? You need him. I'm no you big red government agent. Because I heard MK Ultra and I just instantly thought of Mortal Kombat Ultra, the arcade machine, which got confused. Yeah, with yeah, Polybius, yeah. Hey, who's looking yeah, forward yeah, to the, who's looking forward to the, to <laughs> the hit right. spinoff so. for kids, uh, MK Ultra Girl? Anyways, let's talk yeah, about let's talk yourself. about uh, let's talk about Irie's view well, view on lobotomy. I don't think it was wrong. <laughs> However, could I ever be, be, be forgiven under the under the, our ideas of ethics? I don't know. One day my judgment will be, my, one day my judgment will be handed down by the devil. Whether I'm guilty or not, I have to accept it. As the flies are reflected upon my past, I heard a voice. Talking us on. Uh, Kaneko, Con, I can, Con, can give you him please mute, you. Can you please mute your uh, the, your version of the stream? <laughs> it was talking no sounds. Very clear and simple. Wait, what do you mean mute my version? Uh, like, we, I can, yeah, I can, I can hear my voice through you. Oh, really? I can't speaking. hear shit. I can't hear your voice through her mic. Watch no, what happens when I... I uh, oh, no, okay. Seems fixed now. Alright, cool. Awesome. Oh, right, oh no, nope. <laughs> if I Don't talk you know, loud enough, I, I heard it. Again. I heard it. Don't you love it when life tries to gaslight you? It was very clear and simply, and it struck me with surprise. Understood. Let me prepare a world on the verge of death. <laughs> Wait, let me try and do that again. Let me prepare a world on the verge of death. Uh huh. What? Uh, fuck, I'm yawning. Oh, don't yawn. That's contagious. I'm startled and yawning. Sometimes the phase advancing medicine bore the whisper of the devil, tempting us to accept sacrifices. Heard that devil whisper. Talking about pizza for some reason. <laughs> Pull my devil trigger. <laughs> The devil himself. Wait, isn't that Broly? It's not that difficult. I just have to find the Hinamizawa resident who is about to die. That's all. But. Oh, I'm fucked. <gasps> Jesus! But even if they're about to die, who would be brave enough to provide their body for research while still alive? Don't worry about that. I feel like I should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. If they're dying anyway, we're just going to put them to sleep a little sooner. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Wait, why are we surprised? She fucking murdered an entire town of people. Oh, I'm surprised I'm without four kind of assholes, but... Uh, they had it I, I'm more surprised she would mask off in front of, uh, you know, the guy. On paper. I'm surprised she would, she would do her mask off moment in front of Kyrie. <laughs> the patient will be legally, legally declared dead even though they're alive. And he performed an autopsy while they were still alive. <laughs> but that's impossible! As we perform a neurological surgery, we have to do circular incision in, on the cranial, er, cran, uh, cranial area. Not the family knows the box for sure. Corner. That's where we come in. I'll have the mountain dogs look for a patient in a local hospital that matches our needs immediately. All you have to do is wait with a knife and a fork in your hand. I'll bring your meal right away. I'm not going to eat them, Takano! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, understood. Mio Takano-san is my partner. There's no question about that. But I just can't trust her. I wonder why. She keeps writing I love murder in her notebook over and over again, I don't understand her. <sighs> It's her extremities as, and my, as a researcher, which, con, which contrasts largely with mine. But, are we so different? Recently waiting with a, with a knife and fork in my hands, just as she told me to. 
I just don't want to witness such a gruesome scene, that's all. What she's preparing for me, for me now is exactly what I want. Who's the hypocrite? Not her. It's me. How can I say I'm different knowing what I've done in the past? I performed the bodies without my parents' consent. <laughs> With the patient's consent. My pa <laughs> I need to ask my parents before I perform lobotomies. <gasps> without- remember kids, ask your parents permission before you fucking stick a knife in somebody's eye. Mommy, can I stick fucking this knife inside Timmy's head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine, sweetie, that's fine! <laughs> Yay! Here you go, Timmy. Mommy, can I use my my first lobotomy kit? Yo, a rich assassination moment. Don't do that. <laughs> sure, honey. Don't forget to use the my first assassination kit first. You have it. You need to open that and play with that. Or whatever. Oh, I've, so. I've, sister has that. She said I've... she was gonna use it on dad. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's not time for it fit scale. Yeah. I form the bodies without the without the patient's consent. Despite it being surgical surgery, it might affect their their lives forever. How is that different from what she's doing? I have never doubted my past achievements. However, when I look at her, I start to feel unease. Takano San's talk talking to Okanogi over the intercom in my office. I'm sure she's telling him to come over so that she can explain to him what was just discussed. I'm simply washing without stopping her. I began to reflect upon my past. Remember why I chose to become a doctor. Whew! Irie is a uh, man. Yo, those lobotomies, though, fam, fucking lit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to go contact Okanogi, and I'm just running up to the stage. <laughs> Wait, no, that's the wrong thing I'm editing. Why the hell did it pop, pop, pop up cursed.png? <laughs> Bruh. Uh, no, that's good, that's good. Always pop up. It knows what you're looking at. Uh, I'm trying to find the thing so I can change the fragment number on the stream. Oh we god, I remember number. Don't Wake Daddy! So I that have game a... was scary sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and nice. uh, it's literally... <laughs> Oh, it's- I know, it's literally just Irie's background. I- I won't have to add that in post. Sweet. First page, yeah. first pitch! Did yeah. you upload the- the fucking second stream yet? Uh, yeah, no, a second stream should be uploaded. Okay, I'll get that and fuck I it. didn't upload the third one because obviously that one got fucked up super hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean the ones that have a girl on shoot. Anyway, let's talk about more lobotomies. Hey! Gotta stick that lobotomies. knife in that head, son. I've wanted to become a doctor ever since I was little. Doctors make a lot of money. I look up to doctors. I think those are the kinds of reasons I had. When I play with my friends, I always act, I was, I was act like I always act like a doctor. Clean their wounds and applied ice packs with my friends, sprained their ankles. Using what I learned from my household medical books. I also got my my uh, my children's first lobotomy kit. <laughs> Gotta stick that in Timmy. Everyone, including me, believed that I'd be a doctor one day. Ah, uh, yes. Young Timmy Yoshizawa-kun. <laughs> My family was poor, so they praised me for that goal. Some of them needed to study in law and become a doctor, so they borrowed some pseudo-medical books from my, the local library for me. The rental fees weren't cheap. So I would speed read one book in a day, and the next day, I had to go back to the store and exchange it for a different book. I think they accidentally borrowed a book that they already borrowed before. By doing so, my parents borrowed two books for the price of one. Of course, I know those books were rather useless, but they were highly motivational just the same. My neighbors called me, called me Dr. Kiyosuke Irie-kun. Or just Kiyosuke-kun. I was always picked for class, had, uh, class health officers at school. Even my teachers helped me with the classes. I needed to take it to become a doctor. Of course, in reality, becoming a doctor isn't as easy as it might seem. I say diligently, and the path is most definitely rough. To become a doctor, one must attend college. Because my family was poor, I was told I wasn't allowed to go into an expensive private school. I had to be admitted to a national public university. My grades weren't bad, but the, the admission rate to national public universities is very marginal. Especially since I wanted to go to a medical school, my chances were even smaller. I studied like crazy. My only driving force was my childhood dream of becoming a doctor. Then becoming a doctor and to be looked up by it, put to by everyone, kept me going. And I was admitted. I wasn't at the top of the list, but I made it in. I'm the starting point of making my childhood dream come true. My parents were thrilled. 
Neither my father nor my nor mother went to college. They're very proud of their son getting into a public medical school. They invited our relatives over to celebrate. Although it was public university, tuition wasn't cheap. It felt an extravagant celebration anyway. My father didn't express his emotions too much. He always kept a straight face. He rarely vo voiced his opinions or took initiative on anything. Mother took care of everything, and she showed up last and left without saying a word. He was a typical stern and silent Japanese father of the time. So I was surprised to see him shedding tears of joy, and I cried alongside of him. He went around all my relatives while repeatedly slapping my back, saying how proud and lucky he was to have a son like me. He bragged about my, about my achievements to all who would hear him. The celebration became my farewell party as I was about to leave, to leave for Tokyo. My father yelled bonsai repeatedly at the station and the, as the train pulled away. Oh no. I was a little embarrassed. When I could no longer see my father, I could clearly recall the tears pouring down. Bonsai and not zombai. Huh? Okie okay, anyone who gets that. The days of hellish I too do. I too wish for glory for the Emperor, am I right, fellas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. The day of hellish studying and exams began after that. Some days I was headed to just give up and submit myself to the lavish lifestyle of the city. But the letters from my family always encouraged me and gave me the strength to go on. My dream, then, was to open up my own clinic in my hometown so I could contribute to the region. I never even dreamed of getting involved with brains. <laughs> when I noticed the difference in the letter from my family. The letter said the usual things about things about how I was at home and asked how I was doing. But the postscript is what caught my attention. Your father has become really violent lately. Then he turns the house upside down and I don't know what to do. I just couldn't picture him acting viciously. I was extremely surprised. Something happened. But in the postscript, my mother said there was something that there's nothing she could think of. Other and father become, had been together for a long time. They've been studying since the, since the world before I was born. So she noticed things that I couldn't. I couldn't even think of the reason why my father had become so violent. What happened? We got along so well. Such a lovely couple. And I caused a problem for my mother when I was little, my father only bonked my head with his knuckle. I was acting this way towards my mother. Maybe there's some kind of misunderstanding between them. I was going home for the new year. Maybe I could have a good talk with him then. The situation was a lot more serious than I thought. On one cold winter day, I found my apartment door unlocked. I thought someone had broken in. My mother in, her, in my apartment with her luggage. That's right. My mother could no longer take my father's fury and came to stay with me. This is back when people still believed in the proverb, a woman has no place to settle down all her life. She couldn't go back to her own family because they lived in the same region as my father. She came all the way to Tokyo. Heard my father's violence, my mother's own lips. She cried, saying that she had no idea such a quiet man changed like that. That she wasn't even going to back by going back to him. I didn't know what to do. I asked her if she could talk to him one more time. The bruises on her body told me it was no use. Remember what happened afterwards is too much. I'll be brief. After my mother left, my father thought she was having an affair and went over to my neighbor's house with a wooden sword. He was arrested. He was released immediately, but he seemed someone in the neighborhood was hiding her. He did the same thing repeatedly. He eventually reached, reached the point of getting into fights that anyone he saw. In the end, he picked a fight with some young punks and ended up being beaten to death. My relatives gave my father a decent funeral, but my mother, my mother didn't attend. It's no use beating a dead horse. So nobody said anything negative. We're a my dead father. old man. I'm going to hell. But everyone was simply puzzled as to why he changed so much. Heard from my relatives about my father's final days was a lot stranger than what I'd heard from my mother. My mother only told me about his. Uh, my mother only told me about his. My mother only told me about his sudden rage and violence. My relatives told me. He also laughed and grew sad. Apparently, despite several sudden fluctuations of emotions, especially so in his late last years. He also told me to start, he said, 
They also tell me that he started to complain about headaches after an incident he had. My father was a construction worker. He hit his head hard on a construction board, board during an accident at work. He gained his consciousness quickly and seemed fine. Since the accident, he started to have headaches and behaved abnormally. There's a connection between the, the accident and my father. I sense the connection between the accident and my father's changes. I talked to my professor after I went back to Tokyo. Professor. Hmm? I can't say for certain, but it sounds like it's possible your father suffered some kind of brain damage. There's a chance that blow to his head caused an organic mental disorder. The symptoms your father showed in his final years are similar to the delirium and mental fluctuations we've often seen in similar patients. Human behavior is created by the brain. And if the brain is damaged, it can cause erratic behavior. In other words, my father wasn't crazy. He was suffering from a disorder. If you can perform an autopsy on him, you should check his brain carefully. Maybe you'll find something like a tumor there. My father had already been cremated. There was no way of knowing. But hearing about his behavior, I knew for sure. That was the only way to explain why such a quiet and gentle man would change. I tried to explain this all to my relatives again to regain my father's honor. Hardly anybody understood. If the brain was damaged, he would have been dead. He was alive and well. The accident didn't damage his brain. It was his brain that caused him to change. It was his mind. He simply br brushed it off like that. It was a perception most people have about the brain. I didn't realize the mind and the brain are connected. Most of the relatives didn't believe me. There was one person I really wanted to anyway. That was my mother. As she got older, she grew uh, senile. Exaggerated the abuse she had to endure. All she did was criticize my father. And every time she ended up crying, lamenting that she had married him. They were a lovely couple. They were a great family. I wanted to convey to her that she was misunderstanding the situation with my father. My father's behavior was caused by his brain damage. What he did to her was very sad. But he didn't want to be that way. I told her that it wasn't at fault, that he wasn't at fault. But my mother didn't understand. Before she took her last breaths, I begged her to forgive, to forgive my father. But her final words were, please, don't bury me next to that man. My father wasn't at fault. He was the victim of a brain disorder. You don't complain to a person who's coughing because he has a cold. This coughing is just a symptom to be sympathized with. In my father's case, the symptoms weren't as obvious as a cough. More of changes in personality, which are much harder to recognize. If I'd studied the brain more, I could have explained it better to my mother so that she could not have understood them. They could have had a night been a nice couple again in heaven. And I realized that. I cried. I also realized that there are plenty of people like my father in this world. Who are suffering from a disorder yet they are yet they are, who are suffering from a disorder, yet they are misun misunderstood and despised for it. And I found out. I found out about a miraculous curve, such a little such a disorder is called it caused a called a lobotomy. Ever since that day, from days learning about the brain, I help people who are suffering from mental illnesses. My father is gone. If he was still alive, I could cure him myself. He and my mother could reconcile. That's the main reason why I am here. I need and that's why it's all I need to I need to fix mental illness by fucking stabbing somebody's brain until they stop being mentally ill. I mean, cool like, story. Stay about right. the fucking. Can hey, I man. just be real? That was at least understandable why you kind of went down that, but it's like, 
fucking like, I, I, it's legit every Real moment. Hugo Strange vibes. I mean, he was an adult yeah, in the 80s, so he was like I, I, I got a bit emotional during that bit. Fuck. Wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was understandable, Josh. Yeah, Josh, it was understandable. He wasn't exactly going, I was meant to bring pain to this world. He was fucking, it, 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 I, I go like, I'll, I'll say this, is like, like, yeah, sure, lobotomized, uh, bad. I, 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 I don't say that as like, oh, whatever. Plural is lobotomy, see. lobotomies, not lobotomies. I didn't, I didn't yeah. realize. Lobotomies is actually, lobotomies is actually right on this. The road to hell is paid with good intentions. Well, yeah. it still doesn't mean I, I can't uh, get emotional about like. I oh, no, this doesn't mean you can't. Go ahead and get emotional. What? I didn't realize lobotomies yeah. were bad until I played Batman Arkham City. That's all. Second page was picture. I'm not saying he's a good guy. Wait, this I'm just is, wait we don't fucking... even. But we don't have uh, instructions for the kidnapping operation of the minister's grandson required. And this. Uh, I don't want to woo. All right, whatever. I guess this is technically the correct order. Are you sure you're right about that one, Rook? I bet you that guy's tricking you. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck! Who's talking? And this is this is Rika's house. So I'm assuming it's Rika talking. All right. That very night, head of the Furude family, the priest, gathered his wife and Riga together for a family meeting. In Hinamizawa, it was tradition for the three families to gather and discuss the village's issues. So it was hardly unusual for big families like the Sonozaki family and the Kimiyoshi family to have meetings beforehand to sort out opinions among themselves. However, the Furude family had lost its branch families. So there were only three of them left. Until that day, he had never had a family meeting at all. What is it? You're being so formal. Is it about the dam construction? The dam was the most important issue in the village at the moment. The wife naturally assumed the priest wanted to talk about the dam. For him to gather all of them together like that. It must be a huge decision he had to make. Perhaps he was going to talk about joining the pro-evacuation camp. No, it's not about the dam. Let's have something extremely important which concerns this village. Perhaps all the answers of the village, too. Furude family had served in the priesthood of Oyashirosama, guardian deity of the village for generations. For him, the head of the family, to start out that way, it must be something extremely important. Yet, he said it wasn't about the dam. So what could he want to talk about? I married into this family. I want you and Riku to carry the true blood of the root of the Furude family. Listen very carefully. You two aren't normal human beings. I'm the reincarnation of Uyashiro sama because you shouldn't say such things. Here, let's talk about things like that without her. She's heard enough nonsense from the elderly people at the village hall already. What she just said about her being the reincarnation of Oya Shiro-sama, that appears to be true. What? It's a rather long story. Please just sit tight and listen to me. Wife had a dumbfounded expression on her face, not knowing what he was going to say. But Rika was completely relaxed, wearing her usual carefree expression. The priest started to talk after his wife calmed down. There's a disease in this village that's been here for many years. You fucking knew! It's a special disease which only exists here in this area. Everyone who lives in this village has this disease. None of the people who live here now. All people who have ever lived here had the disease. But we're all perfectly healthy. I've never heard of a disease exclusive to this village. Calm down. As long as we are here in the village, the disease won't cause any problems. Once you move away from the village, that's when it starts to act out. Do you understand? How... How can you expect me to understand such a thing? I have no idea what you're talking about! It's the same as 
the curse of Oyashiro-sama. Ika said it so calmly while her mother became frustrated. That's right. So that when you leave this village, you're cursed. It's just like that. In other words, the curse of Oyashiro-sama, which our ancestors have feared for generations, a disease that only exists in this village. How could that be possible? We've left the village before. Other villagers too. Some have gone on business trips, and some have even traveled to foreign countries. True. That's probably because the, because the disease has weakened over a long time. It was going to disappear eventually. But this is what the dam disrupted that process. Everyone knew that during the dam war, the entire village was aflame with agitation. The excitement was an, an emotional instability makes the disease stronger. I still don't know what you're trying to say. What we thought was a curse all this time was actually caused by the disease? That's right. All the rules that Yashiro-sama came up with were to protect the villagers from the disease. No way. Oh, Yashiro-sama is actually a disease, not a god? How could that be? How can I explain that to the Furude family ancestors? Calm down. Faith in Yashiro-sama won't change. The fact that Yashiro-sama is watching over Hinamizawa will remain the same. Because the disease producing Oyashiro-sama's curse was in the village since long ago. That's all. I won't accept that! Ugh. How can I explain that to our ancestors? I'm sorry, but your god turned out to be a plague? This is a desecration of the Furude family's age-old traditions. No, this is a desecration of Oyashiro-sama. Who told you such a thing? isn't acceptable. It is completely terrible. In the first place, can you prove such a disease actually exists? I can! What kind of proof? Who gave it to you? Deal from the Ministry of Health and the National Institute of Infectious Disease Prevention. They already found the, the pathogen and they are searching for a cure right now. So the documents and the samples last week. People the Ministry of Health called the Hinamizawa Syndrome. No way. As long as you lead a normal life, the syndrome is harmless. Once you go far from Hinamizawa, here where if you become emotionally unstable, it's easy for the disease to manifest itself. When the disease acts out, you can't you can be possessed by your own delusions and in the worst case scenario, you go mad. Discover this disease during the war. A distinguishing a distinguished scholar noticed that only the school soldier from Yamizawa came down with an abnormal disease. He had researched he'd been researching it for all these years. He explained some details of this research, but I'm sorry. They are too complicated for me to even explain. If you don't believe what I'm saying, why don't you go listen to them yourself? At first I was indignant too. Wondering how they dared to blaspheme or Yashiro summons for such nonsense. Ugh. The area clinic was built to study the syndrome. Because there'd be just a clinic on the outside, like to see a research, research center from studying the syndrome. Secret research? That's ridiculous! If it's actually backed by the Ministry of Health, why aren't they doing it out in the open? I say with a clear mind. Well, I guess they can't. For example, think about the leprosy victims who are misunderstood and exiled. Still misunderstood and discriminated against even today, in fact. If the whole country finds out about that and thinks that everyone in Hinamizawa contracted that the weird disease can go mad any moment, they'll turn into chaos. The Ministry of Health has taken into consideration and is working on developing a cure while keeping this disease a secret. Don't get me wrong, though. I'm not trying to pin it on display or anything. I'm trying to eliminate the disease and free the village from it. It was a different story long ago when we supported ourselves, but nowadays it's impossible to leave this village. A simple act of leaving the village can trigger the disease. It's how dangerous it is for the villagers, right? 
repeating myself, I'm repeating myself now, but with the recent damn protests, the whole village entered a strong, excited state. Very bad for the Hinamizawa syndrome. Villagers go crazy and do horrible. There's something horrible. It'll be all over the media. That's right. If that happens, it'll be too late. What? How can I believe this? Are you sure we're dealing with people from the government? Are you sure you aren't being tricked? I don't believe in not being able to believe it. So that we can come to look at their their, their faculty anytime. I've seen it before and know that there are no mere fraud that could have said something like that. Even the big hospitals in Goguro don't have such large scale equipment. If you can't believe what I just told you, you should go to the research center yourself and ask questions. They, explain it, they can explain it better than I can. They said that if the research explanation isn't good enough, they can explain to you at the National Research Institute in Tokyo, even at the Ministry of, Ministry of Health's main office. Mm. Whether I believe it or not, how are we related to that? Other than the men of the Furley family inherited the blood of Oyashiro sama. Also said that if a girl is born of it with it for eight con sec uh, continuous generations, the eighth generation girl will be the reincarnation of Oyashiro sama. Neat. That's right. I'm the seventh. And Rika is the eighth generation. What does that have to do with the disease? Hmm. This Hinamizawa syndrome is caused by a type of parasite. Although they're very tiny. Can't even see people would see them with them with the naked eye. So there's a sort of leader among these parasites. Nobody fucking say it! You... Are you saying... It's the Furude family? Because the leader of these parasites is passed down through the generations only by people with a direct bloodline to the Furaday family. In other words, the previous generation it was you. Now it's Rika. Me. That's... That's ridiculous! That's absolutely ridiculous. Complete tripe. Why would it be something as disgusting as parasites in the first place? Calm down. It's not good. I'm not good at explaining things. Please Clearly. have the experts explain it to you. According to them, studying this parasite leader is necessary to, in order to research the disease. No! Ugh. I won't have anything to do with such suspicious research, and Mika won't either. I'm telling you to calm down! The Hina Mizawa Syndrome acts out, of wi uh, acts out of when separated from the Parasite Leader, not, not the village itself. When you were little. You remember villagers telling you that you had psychic powers. You were able to cure elderly people to get, who got migraines after taking a long trip. It's worth that you were carrying the Parasite Leader. The Faraday Bloodline has the power to cure people with the, with the, with the disease. To discover a cure is extremely important that we participate in their research. Please study me. Will the villagers be safe? That's what they say. And I've... all the villagers are infected? Me? Everyone else? What to go to? Yes. Not only the people who live in the village, but there were relatives in Okinomiya too. We're taking thousands, we're talking thousands of people. That's why the Ministry of Health spends so much money to build a specialized research center. I... I object! How can you let Rika be a sacrifice for something that's suspicious? Well, you might as well tell us the next thing we can do is control the mitochondria in our bodies. 
Well, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Shut up! I don't mind. If Satoko can be saved, I don't mind being a sacrifice. I really don't. You be quiet, Rika! I absolutely refuse. I will go talk to them and refuse them directly. I won't let them kill Rika in some crazy experiment. Besides, Rika is the one and only heir of the Furude family. If something happens to Furude family, will die right there. Don't you see that? You need to think more about your family. That's why the villagers call you an opportunist. After all, don't you think it's a bit odd? A little strange, maybe? The Ministry of Construction is trying to submerge the village right now with their dam project. The Ministry of Health is trying to cure a disease. What in the world is going on? The Ministry of Health has warned that this disease could be triggered by a change in the environment. It's actually trying to tell the Ministry of Health construction stop the damn construction plan. We should go to the research center. Why would they build such a huge faculty in a location that could be submerged? Mika let out a big yawn. It was long past bedtime for a little girl like her. I'm going to bed now. Dad, please let them know I'm willing to participate, okay? Rika! You can't make such a decision without consulting me! I am your mother! Rika! Wait! Rika! I was gonna make the Gohan joke, but this is too serious for that. Yeah. It's, uh... I think Bruh. I know which one you were gonna do, and... Go, oh, that would have been way too serious for that. So another... Not as bad as you could have been. <laughs> okay, for the and 20th, exactly, I'm yeah. going to describe this GIF without, um, posting it. It is, uh, Takano has a recorder in her cleavage, and she's playing it. <laughs> but, oh. man, like, the way her tongue comes out, it's really good. Oh, sorry. Said you look like the track orange. Oh man, and it's the eye. true. I am the orange <laughs> cube. <laughs> okay, so what's the next tip? Oh yeah, the next tip I fucking completely forgot. Alright, uh, where the fuck is my shit? There's my shit. <laughs> Uh, Wait, but like a page. picture of Hanyu appears when you do a wrong one, right? At a quarry in Yagabuchi. This is the next one. Is it? Actually, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. We're good, we're good. Be talking. I'm assuming this is talking now? Hey, we're reading a visual novel. Visual novel. <laughs> okay. Grandfather picked a few cases that are very similar to the syndrome and investigated them. As a result, he confirmed multiple cases of entire communities losing their mind after the death of a religious leader or founder, and finally annihilating themselves. He stated that on average, it happens within 48 hours. It's clear that infected people are affected by the Queen Carrier, and the condition of the Queen Carrier is, in fact, affecting the entire village. The statistics already prove that on weeks Rika felt sick and visited the clinic, he saw an exceptionally high number of visitors. Rika being sick with a simple cold had a massive impact. If something particularly bad happened to her, to be facing a serious situation within 48 hours. It'd be what you call a heated gamer moment. 
that's why the Urie Institute has to protect Viga Furude, the Queen Carrier. It's the most important mission of the Hinamizawa Syndrome Research Project. She's already agreed to help us in our research, but we have to be very careful not to put her in any danger. Also, we have to protect her from anyone who would try to harm her. But... Life is equal to the lives of 2,000 villagers. But... What if something happens to her by accident? Iria Institute must prepare for that situation. That's why I worked on the draft of an emergency manual when the Iria Institute was first established. It's a precaution in case the Queen Carrier dies, or if infected people show acute symptoms of death of the Queen Carrier. This is an emergency procedure, which must be followed within 48 hours of the mass occurrence of the acute symptoms. The final measure is to prevent the damage from spreading to nearby areas. And uses gas, making it look like a natural disaster. My client, the Alphabet Project, took the responsibility of working out the details of the plan. They are used to dealing with things like nuclear weapons, so they ended up being such a big help. There's no way I could have come up with a plan of my own to execute 2,000 villagers. Much time on my hands. <sighs> Through a dummy company, the ground SDF has secured a closed quarry in the Yagoichi region, upstream of Hinamizawa. It's to be the secret storage base for the equipment we'd use in that operation. Equipment that sprays deadly gas that kills people as if they were falling asleep is stored here. In the case of an emergency, a special unit of the ground SDF is to use this equipment to destroy the village. However, preparing for the execution of the villagers itself is politically dangerous. So... If I'm going to insist on them getting the equipment ready, I have to make them understand how dangerous the enemy's hour syndrome is. And also how urgent the need is to have a contingency plan. I have to prove the need for the plan by showing them enough data. So the files my grandfather kept intact come in quite handy. When the clients read my grandfather's articles about the syndrome, they were surprised to see how catastrophic things could be in the worst case scenario. Random in other words, uh, if something happens to this girl, the Queen Carrier, all 2,000 of the villagers will become deranged. Is that what you're saying? Yes. There have been several similar cases, similar to Hinamizawa Syndrome, where group suicides took place. In the case of the Syndrome, we can easily expect extreme defensive behavior, which results from deep paranoia. The result may affect all 2,000 plus carriers. From now on, we may face abnormal situations involving lawless violence and bizarre religious despondence. We must be ready to face such a situation by having a contingency plan. Otherwise, we'll draw the attention from the rest of the world. We have to remember that we only have 48 hours to respond once it happens. Are you saying that if it happens, there's nothing anyone can do? Can't you treat everyone within 48 hours? Uh, that'd, that'd be impossible. impossible. Oh. I'll take this. All right. I, uh, we don't even have a cure, and the research center isn't capable of taking all the villagers. Is it everyone? 
How frightening to realize such a disease actually exists! The world is full of mysteries. Constant vigilance against worst-case scenarios supports our defense and national defense, and is one of the ideas behind the Alphabet Project. Besides, our goal is not to use the plan, but it's vital to be prepared. Indeed. Precisely as you say. I'd still like to look into strengthening the rules of approval authority behind applying the plan, but I understand the necessity to prepare our response for the worst case scenario. Uh, this one for me? Sure. Yo, know right. Let's have the Urban Suppression Research Team run a simulation of the Hinemizawa suppression operation in the region. Jesus, that was practically a tongue twister. I think we should get going as soon as possible. It's possible that the Queen Carrier Girl may be hit by a car and killed at any moment. Thank you, Major Takano. We have further questions, so you can sit down. Thanks to a push from one of my backers, things were decided without too much of a problem. It took me almost all day to explain it to them, but only it took a short time to come to a decision. Nobody criticized, ridiculed, tried to reject my grandfather's articles out of hand. The files they're all reading today are the same shameful articles those haughty authorities left their footprints on as they trampled them in my father's heart. They aren't ridiculing the articles. You're reading what was once rejected. It's nothing big at a glance, but in this moment, my grandfather's research is being recognized for the first time. My heart is filled with satisfaction to see people discussing amongst each other, while pointing to my grandfather's files and raising them as proof. I've worked so hard for this day. And pot in heaven. Did you see this? We see the grandfather smiling down from hell. <laughs> yeah, like, I just texted him, but what's like the reason why? Like, I, uh, I didn't mean to go you for you to go that far, Jesus Christ. Hmm. He's like, I fucked up. <laughs> this is a bad idea. <laughs> he, he's like, can I get a refund for adopting Taco? He's like, this would, this would have worked out if my people actually listened to my advice to pull out. <laughs> or never use the trade system. No, the original reason that they decided to can his research was because the newer, ja older Japanese government at the time was still recovering from World War II. You said, no, get this, get this shit super out of here. Want to be seen as a friend to countries? Not using something like this mess. If Tokyo doesn't want it, I'll happily take it off your hands. Depression of a Shinto okay, priestess. Third, third photo, third photo. I know, I have the guide on hand, don't worry. Okie dokie. The gathering place inside of the Faraday Shrine is in fact the headquarters, to, of, the headquarters of the Onigafuchi Guardians. Normally a shrine should be a calm and quiet place, but there are anti dam signs everywhere, making it very obvious what the location has become. There are over 30 members of the Guardians here at the moment, and they are having a heated conversation about their plans for the future. This meeting place is one of the Faraday family's property. It is a community faculty, so it closes at 9 p.m. Of course, sometimes a, discuss a discussion gets so heated that it goes on, goes on past closing time. The meetings are supposed to end by 9. If the discussion ends early, they usually chit-chat until that time. That's what usually happens. Of course, they also talk about the dam even when, they're, when they chit-chat. Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, compared to the people who are in the damn construction site are too violent. It's idle chatter. The topics are slightly emotional, and because of that, there's a good deal of bad-mouthing the Hojos. Then she threw the circulation notes away! Can you believe that? Oh, that woman is crazy. 
The day she got into a huge argument with me, M Makino san's grandmother at the trash pickup. You know, no. oh. the husband is rude too. He's so irrational. Uh, did you see him at the explanatory meeting? That was bad, huh? I can't believe they're still here. I wish they'd just leave. He said something about money. He has absolutely no shame. No, 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 no! You talk about being irrational, his wife is, is, is the same or even worse. <laughs> Must be hereditary. I've seen their daughter shopping quite often, so I used to say hello to her, but she never replied. Can you believe that? I got tired of it, and I didn't say anything to her anymore. Hey, Emma always looks so depressed, doesn't he? <laughs> By now, the Hojo family had become the enemy of the whole village. Bad mouthing the Hojo family was the greatest shared topic that anyone could even easily contribute to. You know how powerful the three families were, especially the Sonozaki family. You know, known Oryu san's character, he wouldn't have said those things that he did. The Hojo couple of residents here. They were never, they were very, they were very enthusiastic about the council activities. Should have known what kind of person Oryu san is. Could have imagined just what would have happened to him if he talked to her about, uh, talked to her that way. Yet he let his anger take over and he voiced his unpleasant feelings. Well, you'll even think the Hojo family brought their isolation upon themselves. The one negotiate with the government regarding the, no the move, they should have just done so privately. Yet he was foolish enough to express himself at a public gathering like that. So too many sympathize with the Hojo family. Ever since that big fight at the expl explanatory meeting, the Sonozaki family has looked at the Hojo family as their enemy, and started to go after them. Because the other pro damn families go quiet, fearing that they'd be made into scapegoats too, and those who wanted to leave were bitterly forced to give up. Even those people started criticizing the Hojo couple, saying that they could have gotten their compensation to leave, the two hadn't picked that reckless fight. Both the anti damn and pro damn people hate the Hojos now, and the, fa the family has become even more isolated. Moreover, the Hojos are both very aggressive. They should have stayed quiet, at least until things settled down, but they didn't. So that alienated a handful of people who took pity on them as well. So now, every, now, now, now nobody even, ever even says anything to them. All that was immediately obvious by listening to, how the to the foul talk here and there at the gathering place. Rika always helps out by putting the teacups away, so I'm sure she hears what they say as well. One of the Hojo family members is that they're badmouthing is Rika's friend, Satoko-chan. Let's think about what Rika feels while hearing that. Oh, yeah, this is you. You, Khan. Oh, it says, as priest of the Fruited Day Shrine. Yeah. Oh, this is the guy, that's right, fuck. Uh, as priest of the Fruited Day Shrine, should I let this continue? Oyashiro-sama is the god who makes peace between enemies. When the humans and demons fought, Oyashiro-sama descended from heaven and med mediated between both sides. As the caretaker of this shrine, Let's do something before it goes too far. I'm saying this to Oryu-san, who is spitefully disparaging the, Ho the Hojo family. Hey, what are you tapping on? My microphone, it keeps falling down. My right's cock. <laughs> yeah. So that ass was talking shit to me! Who the hell cares? Be cursed by your Shiro Sama, that's for sure. The elderly people cheer her on as they listen to her speak. Yes, that actually was me spitting. Mm -hmm. If I barge in now, I have a feeling that it won't be, as peace won't be a peaceful conversation. I have to make up my mind. This priest of the Fur Day Shrine. Also, for the sake of Rika's friend, Satoko chan. Who are you, son? Don't you think you said enough by now? Ah. Uh -huh. What the hell are you trying to tell me? Well, I'm sure Hojo-san really didn't mean what he said. Isn't it a bit much for that kind of treatment to go on for so long? Shut up! You heard what he said, didn't you? Aren't you pissed? He pissed me off! I should piss you off! Shit! Shit! Ori sounds the head of the Sonozaki family. The heir to the demons. She never gives anyone who stands against her. I wish she would even listen to what I'm trying to say now. Ori-san and the others became furious and refused to listen to me. 
I also mentioned that the damn construction plan will be cancelled soon, so they should calm down already. Because the staff at the Erie Clinic told me the government is putting some kind of pressure on the Ministry of Construction. Thinking that I'm being an opportunist. Soon criticisms of me began to circulate in the room. After that, I realized that I've become... I've become branded as a fence-sitter. The demons are willing to listen. There's a chance to make peace. How can I be peace with people who refuse to listen? I destroyed their mood. I had to give up and shut my mouth. And I felt a hand on my back. A little hand on my back. Oh, Rika! It's getting late, why don't you go home? No matter how hard we try, we can't reach them. Look at Rika looked into the distance as she spoke. People with this corrupted which is probably beyond the means of those of us living in that muck. But I won't lose hope. Surely. Someone who will destroy the stagnation will arrive. Very soon. No. Her eyes turn as if seeing a future that only the maiden of the Faraday Shrine could see. That was fast! Yeah. Wait, are you yeah, sure I'm... that was, like, kid Rika? I thought that was, like, adult Rika lines. Possibly. It... Yeah, it's fine. I'm, it I'm really trying matter. to... Um, that being said, um... Wow, they they kind of like made seem Aria or fucking whatever Mion's grandmother like way worse in the previous episode, but like Jesus, Bitch. they backpedaled that. Whole like I said, that ty that village deserved the. Well, like the thing is, is that like she's like, it's not even petty. She feels like she needs to because for some reason she feels like if she acts like a doesn't act like that, like uh, she's gonna appear weak and thus the Sonazakis are fucked. But it's like you you have no reason to act like this. Like why? Skin page. Good picture. Anyways, here. Uh, I Second believe... page. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just looking around, Con. Don't worry. Might want to save too. But yeah, he has the guide. Yeah, he has the guide. Don't worry. Yeah, I'll make a quick save. Uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna finish this next fragment and then we'll stop for the night because that's ten fragments. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad how fast these are. I kind of expect expected them to be fast. Well, I mean, look at it like this. Uh, by the time uh, that means we have like we have like about four sessions before we've gotten through at least well, all of them, unless they get longer for some reason. I have a fear. Early summer, summer. nineteen seventy-nine A.D. Uh, 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 oh. Oh, am I doing it? Yeah. Shit. That audio Man. isn't there Shit. forever. Shit! Manager? Manager, come on. Say something. Manager. AC. You idiot! Now, AC. Uh -oh. Nope, never mind. Cap's on it. Cap, go! Cap, go! Right. Go! He's dead already! Fine. A loud noise sent everybody out of it. Someone dropped the shovel he was holding. It will smear, smear with reddish black blood. No, not just the shovel. All six construction workers' clothes are blood soaked, too. One of them cried out to the silent dead body of the manager who was drenched in blood. Manager! Manager! Oh! Shut up! He's already dead! It was self defense! Right? Self defense! I started after the manager yelled at them for drinking beer inside the office. Oh! There was no drinking and no smoking signs everywhere. The manager harshly scolded everyone who broke that rule. It was the six workers' fault for disobeying. They drank because they were stressed out by the anti-dam protesters. But they said things to provoke the manager. Told them to step out. As went along. Construction workers, construction workers toiled hard and long hours. Where they, they instigated a fight where the manager to release the stress. And they just curse each other and end up in a wrestling match. Things escalated. But more accurately, the manager exploded all of a sudden. The manager to do with the residents' protest as well. He was under just as much pressure, maybe even more. But how we changed was not normal. The manager was calm at first. 
Gradually he became more aggressive. He could transform into someone completely different. No. He was possessed by, possessed by something evil. And as he had the fight sobered up when they saw his behavior. And then... The manager picked up, picked up a shovel that was nearby and tried to smash his opponent's head in with it. He managed to avoid the hit, but if he didn't, the head would have surely been split open. The manager kept pounding on with the shovel. He was frantically tried to avoid the hits. By this time, the workers had realized that he was beyond a simple fight. They hold down the manager down. Hold the manager down. The manager turned on them with a the shovel too. One of the men tried to protect himself by crossing his arms above his head. Dandruff. And there was no way he could have blocked the shovel swung by with such force. Blood spurted out, and the man groaned in pain. By this time, the six men had realized the manager was not his usual self. The manager would try to bash in their brains without hesitation. As their impression was using a shovel as his weapon, they had to find some kind of weapon too. One of them grabbed a huge hammer. This was what they needed to find something as well. For the manager in that condition, they was better to arm themselves. It wasn't supposed to be this way. <laughs> Wait, I said that? Oh. oh, it can be. It can be anybody. There's like there's like, there's like oh, okay. six laborers. Uh, oh, okay. It didn't take that long for the madness to infect the six workers. A matter of time before they were sent from restraining him to lynching him. When they realized that what had happened, the manager was already a lump of meat. His face was swollen. His shreds of skin had been torn off, and his muscles and skull were visible too. Obviously, he was quite dead. Fuck! What? He almost killed us. Remember? He had attacked us. We wouldn't have fought him, right? The leader of the six, when I instigated the fighting, bringing the rest of the rest to his side, but nobody replied. And so the leader had become frustrated. He was the one who started the fight. The rest simply joined in. He was the main perpetrator. Maybe that's why he was feeling so exasperated. Since that he was the one at fault. Don't just stand there like a little noodle. Too late. We killed him, and there's nothing we can do about it. We're all murderers now. Fuck up. You ain't thinking about turning yourself in and doing time, are you? Fuck you. I can't go to the slammer at my age. We're hiding it. We're hiding this corpse and pretending nothing happened. Some of them knew he was on probation for an assault incident once before. If they got the trouble with the law again, the punishment would have been much more severe than they could imagine. I was always trying to desperately find a way out. If he was alone with the manager's body, then they wouldn't have behaved like that. All I would have had to do was hide the manager's body and pretend nothing had happened. There were six of them, including him. They had partners in crime and witnesses, too. If one of them tried to be turn himself in out of guilt, he'd be in big trouble. But, but... Even if we hide the body, they'll find out sooner or later. Dad, we should plead justifiable self-defense and they might end up pardoning us. Don't be so stupid! Look what we've done, look at his face! Who would think this is the result of self-defense? His parents wouldn't even be able to identify him in this condition, you idiot! But, but even if we hide it, everyone's gonna find out tomorrow morning when the manager doesn't show. It's hopeless! Oh, what's so hopeless is your damn brain, you shithead! He slapped the other man in the face. Ow! He has such an evil look on his eyes. Listen well, dipshits. We're all murderers, okay? Keep griping now, or we'll all get slammed with five or six years. Just what are you here trying, Blab? We'll all be locked up. Don't underestimate the pen. If you're prepared to get caught anyway, then run like your life depends on it. You can resign yourself to it later when it's time to pay the piper. His visage just turned suddenly more demonic. The expression the manager just had, had just a few minutes ago. But he was possessed by the same thing that possessed the manager. The five men started to think that way. When they considered it, all the villagers in the anti-dam protest had the same expression on their faces, too. 
The real name of Hinamizawa is Onigafuchi Village. People said the wicked demons lived here, and they possessed people. The men couldn't help but recall the exaggerated story often told by the demonstrators. The major swung their shovel after his expression changed to that demonic one. There was no guarantee this man wouldn't do the same. In fact, he was still squeezing the hammer in his hand, blowing at everyone who had threatened him. This one suggested surrendering. He'd probably smash their head in with it. I know. Make sure nobody betrays the rest. I have an idea. <laughs> It'll make it easier to hide the body, too. Uh, what is it? <laughs> We're gonna cut up the body with a big piece. Oh, wait, what? They all wanted to object to the idea. Telling him was a serious crime itself. Remembering the body would be too much. But if anyone objected, he'd be killed on the spot. But no one said anything. We'll all cut him up together. Remember what the manager used to say? Hmm. We're all in this together. But we can take a body part and hide every part. What do you think, huh? This way, we're all equally guilty, right? <laughs> I won't let anyone pick themselves up. <laughs> oh. oh. Five men were all taken in by his ghastly face. And they couldn't even feel they could even feel the fear of on the Onigafuchi demons creep up on their backs. Oh shit. So that's what happened! Yeah, it wasn't even the fucking wasn't even them doing it like they said, Ori, it was just sort of like, yeah, it was totally us. <laughs> In reality, it was just the fucking Ori is the worst. Or you're just worse than fucking Han you. No, no, no! <laughs> no, but this doesn't mean that the curse isn't fucking real! What? Well, uh, yeah, the curse was never real. Like, yeah. We, we yeah, already used it. It was a it fucky was little like, disease who did everything. Yeah, uh, AC was technically right. Uh, magic didn't really cause any of this. It was just the only magical part was a uh, Hanyu and a uh, uh, fucking Rika Fuck. living through the loops again. Yeah. Okay, so, so was fucking every, right. Yeah, there was no magic. What? I, mean, yeah. I don't know. So it's like on one hand, I think the idea of the disease God is very interesting, but it's also like very. Fine. Oh, that's fine. Uh, that's very cool. nice. It's very like I almost want to say anti mystery. Anyways, huh? uh, the idea of like a parasite controlling shit and everything. It's nice background, dude. Yeah, it's Irie's own dead army. We've established hey, this. Hey, Dizzy. I like Dizzy, it's true. Are you gonna voice Kai when we eventually do Guilty Gear? No. <laughs> no. We aren't. The Guilty, so Gear, the Guilty Gear story mode is fucking long. It's long, yes, it also, is. it's already voice acted. Yeah, okay, can we do so Blaze Wood instead so I can be Makoto? I'll be Faust. I want to be Makoto. I'll be Thin. I'll Let's be Faust. Let's see, uh, we are on 11, so that means that we're on page 1, the first sacrifice! <laughs> Wait, are the, the ones that are correct, like, with a blue outline? Oh, no, this means that we've just, we've read this one already. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's, uh, that's 10 down. Wait, isn't there an actual story Yes. Yes. Yes, there is. There's more after these. There's more after this. Wait, don't you think you should say... Okay, I guess we're calling it there oh. tonight, then. Yeah, we were calling it there. Yeah. Um, uh, that's cool. Higurashi for the night. I hope they don't get longer as we go on. Mm -hmm. I me, uh... Uh, Watch it get longer as we go on. My only question so, now is, whatever happened to the sixth body part? Mm. I don't know. I, don't know I guess someone hit it real well. That body part was his cock. Like, I feel... Uh, I don't know. Some, of, some of these felt a little unnecessary, don't you think? A lot of these fragments should have been, like... They they should have been the side content that you read about. <laughs> yeah, they they definitely feel like these are all the tips. Oh um, hey, like, Mr. Matt is here. Hello. <laughs> but that being said, um, I find it a, a little bit like pace running that like Ryukishi added like specifically this scene. Let's say he had to keep like whatever all is going, but like um, let's say Ryukishi uh 
I wish he placed the opening of like, what was it, uh, Hanyu and the Takano stare down at the temple at the once you finish these fragments, because I feel like that would have been a way more appropriate place to put it. Okay, so, that's what the uh, anime does. He puts it right at the end. Yeah, that so, would have been way more better, or fucking better, because it's like then it builds up to like, yeah, you're gonna do the confrontation but like right here it's like yeah you're gonna do the confrontation no actually um you're gonna go through 50 fragments oh it's yeah hey all, here, it's almost like it. that Fucking... the writers on the anime didn't do this so... as their first rodeo